How's it going? My name is Mac Lielmo. I'm a producer, engineer, session drummer here at my studio in beautiful Bell Nil Belleville, New Jersey. I got it. Bell Nil, Bell Nil. How's it going? My name is Mac Lielmo. I'm a producer, engineer, session drummer here at my studio in beautiful Belleville, New Jersey. Uh, I've worked on projects uh, such as Sea Space Cowboy, Vended, Fuming Mouth, Fit for an Autopsy, and Meyer, just to name a few recent releases. Uh, I think it's crucial that metal drums kind of, you, you feel them when you listen to them. They, they kind of pump the speakers and, and feel like the drummer's in the room. There's only so much that EQ and compression could really do if the performance isn't there to begin with. So uh, one thing I make sure of is that, and I've kind of been known to punish drummers about this, is that drummer hits very hard and plays with conviction and gives me a tight performance from the get-go before I try and, you know, fix or edit to make him sound a certain way. I'd rather have that from the get-go. I mean, something that Split EQ actually helps with is either exaggerating or amending certain things about his, the drummer's performance that weren't originally there. When I mix, I, I love dialing things very aggressively. I love hard-hitting, punchy drums. I love distorted, in-your-face guitars, in-your-face vocals. But sometimes that stuff kind of gets out of control and it's hard to tame. And I think Split EQ is something that helps kind of dial it back and make those things more digestible for the listener. All right, so now we're in a mix session. This is a uh, single called Misery Ritual by a band called Bleed. They're from here in New Jersey, kind of deathcore, hardcore style band, very aggressive, very angry sounding band, uh, requires a lot of punchy, uh, drums and just overall hard-hitting mix. So what we're going to look at is the drums and vocals of the session. And I've kind of got everything dialed and sitting pretty well. Levels are all automated, but I kind of just want to put some finishing touches on those two things just to make sure that they're sitting right and that they're not really like poking out any more than they should be. All right, so let's take a look at what we got here. Okay, so that's a pretty much finished, dialed mix. Um, but there's still some things that kind of hop out and some things that are kind of distracting. Um, I guess we could start with the kick as, you know, usually for this sort of stuff is kind of the, the focal point. Um, so I'm going to pull up a split EQ on my kick bus. This is a uh, basically my... Real kicks and, and fake kick samples summed into one bus. So we were kind of looking at everything. Let me just solo that real quick so we can hear what we're working with. So as you can tell, very, very clicky, very punchy sounding kick. More, more sample than than real, but it's, it's still in there. Um, 
And something I noticed when I was listening to this was that it almost almost pokes out too much. Like it's almost uh, distracting at times. So we're going to loop this section real quick, kind of an intro breakdown, kind of transition to this next blast beat part. Kicks are kind of spare, uh, not a lot going on with those, but you could really, they, they really pop out when they happen. Let me show you what I mean. See how they're kind of like the 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 high end tick of the kick drum is kind of like poking out through the rest of the mix. It's almost distracting. We don't want that because we want it to be present and uh, have that sort of characteristic, but not kind of be distracting or, or sound like it's outside of the rest of the band. So what I did was I took out some of the. Uh, the high mid and, and high frequency transient data of that kick drum. So the tonal qualities of the top end of that are still there, but the clickiness is kind of suppressed. Let me show you what that sounds like. See, it's kind of more subdued. I could even go a little crazier with that. Let me take these both down a little more. Let's see what that's like. Let me go through it one more time. And I'm going to AB with and without the split EQ. So you can tell instantly like that, that clickiness of the kick drum is still there, but it's just being suppressed and more controlled just so it's not uh, so jarring when they come in. Let's move to a different section of the song where the kick kind of picks up and gets a little faster. So that was without split EQ. Let's take that back and see what it sounds like with the changes that I had made with the uh, lowering the top end transient. See how that's so much better because the high-end clickiness of the kick is not distracting anymore. It's kind of, it's suppressed and it's, it's still there. You could still definitely hear the kick drum and, and everything that it's doing, but it's not, it's not poking through as much. It's much more subdued. What's great about the split EQ as opposed to, you know, most of your other typical EQ plugins is that you're quite literally able to split the tonal qualities and the transient qualities and, and adjust them differently. Um, and what that means is you can adjust the frequencies you can hear and the frequencies you can feel. Either whether it's, you know, the low end of a kick drum that you can feel, you know, in your chest or, or the top end of a snare drum that you can hear poking in your ear. You can adjust all of those things independently as opposed to other EQs where you can kind of just take down the overall level of certain frequencies. You're kind of able to dissect it a little more in depth with this. All right, I'm going to solo this kick track. We're going to kind of dissect and look at what exactly we're taking out of each of these frequency bands. So as you can see, the green means that's the transient data, and then 
the blue is a tonal. So let's look at the tonal. See how it kind of takes out that harshness of that frequency, but still keeps that high end shimmer that you want so it can cut through everything. But it takes out the part that you don't want. It takes out the high end clickiness that could be distracting. Let me do the, the highest band that we got here. See, that's very, and that almost hurts to listen to, right? You don't want that, but you still want the, that top end uh, airiness to your kick drum. That's what it sounds like. It sounds like, like a, a dog's nails on a hardwood floor. Mm -hmm. You don't want that. So by doing this, you're in, in essentially making it more digestible to listen to. Say you want more transient than tonal and you want to kind of adjust them independently. If you hold shift, you can kind of balance them out separately. All right, so what we're looking at here is my automation window. It's got all my buses, you know, kicks, snares, uh, bass, like everything pretty much split up and laid out so I can... If I do this, kind of affect things individually. All right, now that I've explained what Split EQ basically does, let's go and start affecting other parts of the drum kit and kind of get everything settled and sitting where it should be in terms of uh, its relationship with the guitars and vocals and, and everything like that. Okay, let's move on to our snare bus. Let's take a look at what we're dealing with here. I'll play a more open part where the snare is kind of uh, a little more exposed. So with the snare, I actually did the opposite of what I did with the kick drum. Um, so instead of taking out high frequency data, I'm adding it. So what I did over here is add a little bit of uh, high frequency transient data, kind of these upper mids, add a little more crack and pop to the snare. And then this guy over here is adding just like a little bit more airiness to kind of uh, just poke a little more through the uh, through the guitars. Let me solo that for you and, and show you what the difference is. So this is without the split EQ. And this is with. See how it kind of adds that, that pop that wasn't already there before? And then also the uh, tonal band here. Notice how it's kind of more of like the snare sound, like the snare bottom sound. You're not really adding a lot of uh, attack or anything. I think that's... That's the cool part about this is that you're adding that uh, that airiness to the snares, but you're not bringing out any of the attack because we don't want to do that. We want the attack to remain over here and not so much up here. All right, let's move on to the toms. Let's check out this section here that kind of transitions with a little uh, busy tom fill. Let's listen to that.
So one thing I noticed off the rip is uh, there's kind of like a boominess to it anytime the toms happen. They kind of like explode that lower mid section. They kind of kind of get a little woofy and not not as clear as I would like them to be. So what I did was actually pretty different from the kick and snare is that I'm actually only affecting the tonal qualities of the toms. So right in this kind of uh, like 200 range, took out a little bit of muddiness uh, and then added a little bit of high end just to kind of make them pop even more, just so they're, they're even noticeably less muddy. Let's check out what that sounds like. Let me play that section one more time, just to A, B. Now here's without split EQ. So yeah, you get that kind of woof, that woofiness down in the lower mids. Let me solo these and, and show you what I'm talking about. And the reason I took out only the tonal band of that specific frequency is because you still you still want that low mid punch, but you don't want that low mid woofiness or boxiness. And then with the top end here is what I added. But I didn't want to add any extra, I, I thought that the toms were plenty punchy, so I didn't want to add any extra transient data that we didn't have to. All right, let's move on to cymbals. Something I usually always like doing on, uh, on cymbals is using a de -esser just to take out that high frequency harshness, but I feel like this does it a little better. I feel like de I mean, with cymbals, weirdly enough, and vocals, they, uh, if you go too overboard, they kind of add that lispiness, that kind of th sound to it, and that's, no one likes that. You don't want that. So, what I did with my cymbals, let's pl actually play, uh, let's play this section without split EQ real quick. So one thing that stands out to me is that the cymbals are kind of like on top of and poking through the guitars, where, whereas I kind of want them sitting with the guitars and kind of blending in. You don't want them to be too overbearing. Um, so what I did was same thing as, as we did with the kick drum almost. Take some of, uh, take some of that transient frequency data out of the top end, and then just a little bit of that tonal uh, high frequency data just to kind of bring it down a tad more. And I was listening to that with the split EQ on. Notice how it doesn't really, uh, it doesn't have that de effect on it, like I was talking about, that lispiness to where it would almost like suck the life out of the cymbals. It's still there, and, and it's, it sits way better with the guitars. They're a little more in with the guitars instead of on top of, which I think is, is important for kind of balancing everything. All right, so the last thing we're going to look at is vocals. And I use split EQ on vocals primarily as a quote-unquote de -esser. Um, Like I was saying before, something about de that I don't like is if you want to go super hard on them, they add that lispy quality to your vocal tracks. And that is something we do not want. 
So I'm going to play this section. Uh, first, I'm going to play it without split EQ, and then I'm going to pull it up and show you what I did. Okay, so that's nearing the end of the song. Kind of busy vocal, chorusy bit. Let's see what we're doing with. So what I did was uh, kind of like what we've been doing is pulling out these high mids and highs. Uh, to uh, if you noticed before, the vocals were kind of on top of any everything and. Like I said, with the the kick and the cymbals, like you don't want things to be on top of something else. You want it to be, you want it to fit in and sound mixed. Um, so let me actually just play the vocals soloed for you, just so you could see what exactly I'm doing. This is vengeance! Power and greed! With all of us, we come on Okay, so those are all the vocals that are happening at that point. A lot of layers. And all of that stuff adds up. All the sibilance and, and uh, the kind of S-y sounds in all of those layers, when you have all of them going at once, they, they kind of pile up and can become a little bit overbearing. So what I did here was take out some of that, you know, high-end clickiness to tame that and make it sit a little bit better. Let me solo those again and then show you specific bands of what I'm taking out. And it's essentially the same stuff you would be taking out when you're DSing, except it doesn't add that weird lispiness to it. It kind of it just takes it out without uh, removing any of the the qualities that were already there. It just changes the character of it. Let me play with and without. I'm gonna A B the uh, the split EQ. Vengeance! Power and greed! With all of us, we come alive! This is vengeance! Power and greed! With all of us, we come alive! Noticeable difference. Noticeably different. You can really see how much cleaner it sounds without all of that harshness in there. Here's with it with the full band. So these are just some of the few things that you could do with Split EQ. I mean, obviously, the possibilities are endless with this plugin, and just because I do something a certain way doesn't mean there's only that's the only way to do that specific thing. So if you like what you heard and want to learn more about what I do, visit MacLeomo.com. Also visit EventideAudio.com to learn more about this plugin. Uh, check out the upcoming releases from this band, Bleed, a song called Misery Ritual. Check out Sea Space Cowboy, The Romance of Affliction, uh, Vended What Is It Kill It, and Fit for an Autopsy, Oh What the Future Holds, all records that I worked on that are coming out at the end of 2021 or early 2022. Thanks.